Welcome to this edition of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at designing, coding, and printing this. What is this? Well, it might look a little bit like a birthday cake, uh, but what it really is is uh, more of an art pencil carousel type thingamajig. So I was looking for something to be able to, on my desk and workbenches and everything, to kind of store longer type stuff in the center, like letter openers or scissors, etc., than large. Uh, components in these lower tiers, um, you know, like player handles, etc., and then you know, kind of like standard pencil size down here for screwdrivers and pens and that kind of stuff, and then have a little bit of a lip of a tray here for just different odds and ends that could be held in here. So uh, I whipped this up in OpenSCAD, and I also thought it'd be a good model to kind of use as a basis to try some other experiments with. So um, let's take a little bit of a look at the coding first. And so uh, with that, it's not overly parametric. And if I scroll the mouse the right way, it will make the code bigger. Um, so the first thing I did is I do have maximum dimension over here, uh, which is inches. It does a translation. And um, I'll show you a little bit of that in the code down below. However, that sets just the size of this bottom plate with the uh, brim. Then the next thing we do is we actually call the module Art Stand. And what I've done, since there are so many cylinders in this, I've set a um, FN number up here uh, at the top of the code that changes them all. So I'd actually, even while you're designing, suggest going to a lower number than 60. I typically print at about 100, but the rendering for this will take uh, quite a bit of time, even on a, a pretty substantial computer. Uh, however, then to make up the rest of the body of this, what I do is I come down here and I use my standard difference union model uh, where the first thing we do is we create a union. So we create a first cylinder here, uh, as you can see. So we translate this uh, basically up because we're going to use center equals true. And this is the center structure right here that you see. So if um, just to kind of give you an idea, if we pop uh, that in front of it, you can see that this is that center structure um, in the model. And then what we do down here conversely is we take out the center, so we hollow it out uh, a little bit, and then we translate up to give it a bottom. And, uh, you know, we can set the diameter in here. So in here we're, you know, basically running um, a two-inch tube and then we're making it a little bit smaller on the inside. And then what we're doing here for the three different tiers is I've set up a module that I've called. Now I, I attempted to do this with a four with embedded for loops and the problem that I realized quickly is um, the instantiation problem or restriction in, in OpenSCAD uh, for outside of a for loop to have a variable reassigned to itself. So what I ended up doing just for simplicity, that at least this time around, is, is just uh, initiating the module three different times. And then let's take a look here is what do we do with this module? So circle loop takes a couple parameters. So the first parameter is the number. And this, this number is the number of cylinders that we're going to place around the circumference. The second uh, piece is the height of those cylinders, the diameter of those cylinders, the Z offset of those cylinders, because we'll need that for this component to take to knock out the center hole, uh, and then the spread, so how far out. Now, one of the things I think in a future um, upgrade of this code I'm going to do is, is set the number to have a control based upon the circumference. So it'll read the height and put in a maximum number. Uh, but one of the kind of cool things about this is you can kind of group these. You can either make them very loose or very tightly spaced together as, as I have here and, you know, vary the uh, the size of the union group to up here. Um, so if I just say I want to do this, say instead of 30, I want to do 25, and it'll come out a little funky with the holes, but see how I've now changed it. So I still have the same circumference, however, I've got more meat. And if I were to change this down to 25, then I could um, again have, have, uh, 
uh, larger, you know, uh, well, I'm sorry, not larger, but actually, you know, uh, fewer holes, but I could also make larger holes because if I look at my diameter here of 10, I could actually now kick this up to say, let's say 30, and then I could kick this, the hole up to 20 down here, and well, that didn't quite work the way I thought it would. I think if I do 15, it might work better. Uh, over top of what I had in the 10. Uh, that still didn't work out, did it? Um, am I 30, 10? Um, height 100. So I might have to drop this down to something like 13. There we go. So you, you kind of get the idea a little bit um spread 30 so uh but anyways you kind of get the idea and this is one of the reasons since you in this little bit of a matrix between these two you can change these sets of numbers to come out whatever configuration uh that you want in um just looking here why did that come out a little bit odd uh, it shouldn't have because my spread's the same uh, anyways, um, you get the general idea, and then again, what I'm doing is I'm just reinstantiating uh, this. But as I was uh, talking about before, my my original intent was to do this in one pass with two embedded for you know for loops. Uh, but with the Open SCAD, you can't reinstantiate variables. So whatever you declare it as, it, it has to remain that, or it'll remain its last assigned value. Um, so in most languages you can do something like um, you know test equals test plus 10 and unless it, in, in open SCAD you can only do that within the, the the for loop structure and so you can't pass that so that's um, actually was part of the problem with this so I, I'm playing a little bit with well a sign has been deprecated and um, they have the let command so anyways I've been experimenting with that and if you guys got suggestions hit me up down below of, of how maybe to do this better I'd like to hear what you guys are thinking again I didn't you know invest a whole lot of thought because I actually wanted to get this done and, and uh, uh, actually print this out and try this out because I <laughs> needed one anyways um, you kind of get the idea um, just changing these back so I can return it uh, the way it was. There we go. Now, one of the other things that I did do too is is just for effect is the spacing. Uh, you notice I I designed it so it would cut out the piece into the next one. I did this to cut down to kind of well number one for the cool effect and number two just to cut down on the amount of plastic. Um, so again you could do do it in a little bit different ways if you so wanted to. Um, and then the last piece is, is I added another module called RIM and long story short let's just pop in uh, this um, so it creates this rim around here so it knocks out the um, the inner circle here so I create a cylinder and then I drop it I translate it down a little bit and then I just knock out the um, uh, a little bit on the inside so it creates a bit of a lip so now I printed this out on the Wanhao and I originally was going for seven inches but I had a problem inside cure and that's why I knocked it down to uh, uh, six inches because if you if I wanted to go at seven and here I show you how this so th see how this looks at seven inches it actually provides a pretty good sized lip and seven inches is pretty nice sized so um, anyways this is the uh, general model so uh, I'll put it out on the website and then uh, Tell you what, let's go take a quick look at the time lapse and then let's see how this actually printed out. Uh, again, this with uh, very thin shells, uh, I think, uh, you know, one layer shells, 0.4 millimeters, which is actually too thin for 
really, you know, if you're going to use it, you go with two. But with one shell and like 5% infill, it was an eight hour print. Uh, it was a 14 hour print with the two shells in 10%, which is probably what I would at least recommend printing it at. Uh, however, I just kind of wanted to see how this would come out and see how the whole size is lined up and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, let's head over. Let's take a look at uh, time lapse of it printing and then we'll go ahead and uh, see over at the bench and let's take a look at the finished product. So we took a uh, look at the time lapse of this being printed. So let's now talk about what it is. Actually, this is an art pencil carousel type thingamabob. So uh, what I was doing is looking for one of these, and uh, I did up a prototype in OpenSCAD, and I am going to make some changes. And one of the things when I did this, I, I printed this with... Um, very thin, only only 0.4 millimeters of a shell, and 5% uh, infill. So it's it's pretty flimsy, and some of the uh, lip here isn't very, not really the lip, but the base in here is not very well formed. But uh, for a prototype, it actually did pretty good. So um, came out pretty good. So how does it work? Well, in short, the idea is is you take stuff and you put stuff in there like this, and then I got it also so you can put uh, stuff like that and then you can put pencils like that and uh, so I did make a couple different sizes so I'm not sure how the all the sizes are going to work out but so far they seem to be somewhat okay um, so I made I made these a little bit bigger I think they made these like 12 and these 10 so uh, uh, so that's how it goes, and then we can just keep going. I mean, actually, this can hold quite a bit of stuff. Um, screwdrivers. I think one of the things I'm going to do is make these bottom holes also larger and, and extend this out a little bit more. Um, because one of the things you notice that the the height of this is you know uh, th these are really kind of shallow for a screwdriver but these actually hold very well and, and then up here kind of hits that so these are probably about the um, the best so I'm gonna kick this out a little bit more um, for that and let's see what else can we uh, put in there uh, I can't find anything else right now on the bench ah, well, let's put let's put that in there so uh, anyways it uh, actually turned out pretty good as uh, as an organizer. There's again a few changes I'm going to make. I'm going to kick this out now. I did design this to you know be able to put uh, you know like little screws and things like that, like I'm doing here. And um, I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit bigger. So I'd originally intended on making it seven inches, but uh, I was having a problem getting it to print on the one house, so I knocked it down to six and it printed just fine this so this is six and so uh anyways that really came out eh, it's supposed to be six let's see yep it's about about six so it's about what we anticipated so anyways this uh this came out pretty good uh again i modeled this in open s kit so if you're if you're interested and you want to print this out and you're looking for it i'll put the link below to the uh open s kit on the open s kit site where this is and also on the diy 3d site it'll point back to uh the code for this and uh, i'll probably put an stl out there too if you if you don't want to use the open s kit code and you simply want to print this out but i'm, I'm pretty happy with this I, but i think the other thing that i'm going to do is I'm going to knock this top piece down a little bit. I don't think it needs to be quite as tall here, so I think this will come down a little bit. Kick these out and make all the holes in general a little bit bigger, uh, because for the for actual pencils, it does a really good job, and that's the original measurement I took. 
but for example like this pen this kind of sits in there funky but uh, as you can see in the larger one so I'm gonna I'm gonna beef that up I, I might actually even write some code to stagger them so big one small one big one small one or something like that I don't know yet but uh, even even this uh, funny one with the hand, hand grip fits into this where the smaller ones down here it doesn't quite fit into so Anyways, I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out, and again, uh, I would go for the longer print and print it out with at least two shells, but I tell you what, the 5% infill seems to be more than enough. It's very sturdy. Um, so anyways, uh, that's what this is. It's an art pencil holder. I've been wanting to do the one of these for a while. So if you found this video interesting, hey, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, more coming. Cheers.